Cents, please. 80 cents, huh? Wait just a minute, will you? Oh, Barney. Hello, Barney. Well, if it ain't private detective Michael Shane. Look, let me a buck, will you? Uh, come on, be a good boy. Sure. That a boy. Here, bud, get the change. Ain't seen you for a couple of months. Where have you been? Oh, places, San Francisco, Seattle, big case. Oh, stop kidding. Why don't you come back on the force? At least you'll have a dollar to loan to a private detective. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Plug you. Hello, Edno. Mr. Shane. How are you? He's just about scared me clean out of my skin. Hey, where's my leading lady, huh? Ooh, candy. Oh, look, she isn't here today. Where is she? On her way to the city hall. Hey, something's wrong. Come on, spill it. Merle's getting married today. Getting married? She can't do that to me. Well, you can't blame her, none, Mike. After all, she was caught between a stiff breeze and plenty of wind. Talk English. Well, you gave her a stiff breeze, and he gave her plenty of wind. Who's he? To Merle, a genuine pearl. Alexis Founier? Pronounced Faunet. Yeah, Barry. When did she meet this guy? A couple of weeks ago. Well, who is he? Well, he sells us the Founier one-minute wart remover. And boy, is it Faunet. I'll be seeing you. Where are you going? I'm going to remove a wart. Alexis. What is it, Marichka? I, uh, I was wondering if, if we aren't being too rash in getting married so soon. After all, we've only known each other four weeks. Nonsense, my little Bobrichki. We have already been married in heaven. This is only a legal ceremony on earth. You speak so beautifully. It sounds like music. I only play the music. You, my Marichka, compose it. Alexis for I am. I'm Inspector Peterson. You're under arrest. Arrest? Hey, wait a minute. What's the charge? Peddling illegal drugs, bigamy, and blackmail. This is ridiculous. This is your mug, isn't it? Hey, where did you get that picture? You'll find out at headquarters. All right, boys, take him away. No, no. This is outrageous. I will not. Let me alone. You come along. Ninety dollars, Mr. Shane, and them's the landlord's orders. Now, be a good soul, Mrs. Flaherty. Sir, you wouldn't be after throwing out a poor, hard-working man who's been down in his luck, now, would you, honey? Oh, stop your shenanigan. You ain't pulling any of your charming ways on me, Michael Shane. Pee up or get out. Oh, uh, look. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Merle. Oh, just a minute, sweetheart. I... Yeah. Out the back way and quick about it. Well, what for? For the love of Michael Shane. You sweetheart me, you tin-plated, pin-headed stool pigeon. Oh, no, sweetheart. I couldn't stand by and see you throw your life away on a wart remover. I love you. You love me? No, 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 please. Tell that to that redhead of yours. What redhead? The one in Seattle. Oh, <laughs> 
Now, you see, that's what's wrong with you, Dame. You believe every silly little rumor you hear about a guy. Rumor, huh? Right. You're not the only private detective. Try and laugh this one off. While there is no doubt that Miss Ruby Raymond was with Mr. Shane on a professional mission, our investigator's detailed report compels us to believe that there was a strong social relationship. <laughs> a strong social relationship. Think fast, Mike Shane. Jealous, huh? Proves you love me. Love past him. No, no, wait, 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 honey. Telephone. Now, be careful of that. That was your birthday present to me. <laughs> hello. Mike? Inspector Peterson. Oh, hello, Inspector. It's the Inspector, then. We just got through turning the heat on this Fonet guy. I got to hand it to you. You sure had him pegged, right? That water remover was just a blind. He's got a record a mile long. Everything in the book. Bigamy, blackmail, forgery. Hey, Inspector. Do you mind repeating that last part? Fonet is wanted for everything in the book. Bigamy, blackmail, forgery. Very good work, Inspector. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks a million to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Very sorry, darling. I had to do it. You see, I had to save you from yourself. Oh, Mike, I've missed you so much. Ah, that's my little pal. And don't you worry about me anymore, honey. I'm never going to leave you again. From now on, I'm going to be called Mike the Copper Slipper Man. Hmm? You mean you're really quitting the detective racket? You know, wait a minute. What's so wrong about being a detective? Look, I want to be your wife, not your widow. That or else. And you drive a pawnbroker's bargain, but... Okay, I'll quit. Oh, Mike, that's swell. <laughs> as soon as you get a job, we'll get married and buy that ranch in the valley and raise rabbits and... Raise rabbits? Among other things. <laughs> oh, good morning, sweetheart. Did I wake you up? Oh, no, Mike. I've been awake for hours. Well, you can dust off that marriage license. I got me a job. You have? Oh, gee, Mike, that's swell. What kind is it? A legitimate one. Mm-hmm. Thomas Aircraft Company. Uh, as, a, as a riveter. Yeah, I'll give you all the dope about it tonight. Bye-bye, sweets. Goodbye, Mike. Oh, thanks, Joe. That puts me in the clear. Forget it. I can use a dozen more like you. You know, there's a heck of a lot of police work to be done around a plant like this. Of course, we got to keep it on the QT from the little woman. At least until we get hitched. <laughs> you heard me tell her I'm a riveter. You are. Oh, quit your kid. Right? Your identification card reads that way. And as far as everyone in this plant is concerned, you will be a riveter. I don't know anything about riveting. You'll attend our school, learn the ropes, and after that, go in and keep your eyes open. Oh, factory stool pigeon, huh? No, thanks, Joe. Count me out. I don't like fingermen. Who said anything about being a finger man? There's a war going on. Did you ever hear of sabotage? Oh, now that's an animal with a different smell. When do I start? Right away. Good. First, you'll be fingerprinted and mugged. Well, <laughs> that'll be something different, eh? Get your gate pass, and then you'll be ready to go to school. Good. Attention, all police officers. Allow no one to enter or leave these premises until Gee, further notice. There's been a robbery. Cashier's office. What's up, Jonesy? Look, stand up open. Slug. I'm cold. Get the doctor. Okay. What happened? Came here a few minutes ago, and there he was on the floor. I turned in the alarm. Check the vault and see what's missing. Good morning. Oh, in here, doctor. How is he? He's coming to now. Mr. McCarty, please. They're gone. What's gone? The diamond. Are you sure? Yes. It's the diamond drawer. We just got a new shipment in day before yesterday. $100,000 worth. Notify Mr. Thomas immediately. Say, what's an airplane factory doing with diamonds? They use them in the plant. Well, don't get sore, Joe. I was just asking. They're industrial diamonds. They use them for grinding things. Like motors, dyes, tools, grinding wheels. They must have been insured. Oh, it isn't the money value. Ever since the war started, the world's supply's been limited. And Uncle Sam dishes them out only by priority. Oh. How do you feel? I'm not fine. Thank you. What happened? I don't really know. I was opening the vault, as I always do when I come in in the morning, when I'm suddenly struck.
That's all I remember. Could you see who hit you? No. It happened so quickly. What time did you get in there this morning? My usual time. Promptly 7.30. Did you open the vault right away? Yes, sir. Whoever pulled this job had plenty of time to make a getaway. Why not check the exits? Over 6,000 men changed shifts at 8 o'clock. It was well-timed, all right. Yeah. Doctor, if you please bandage my head now, I think I'd like to go home. Of course. Come with me. Let's get back to the office. Yeah. Well, McCordy, have you found out anything yet? Not yet, Mr. Thomas. That's fine. Let's not hurry. Let's wait till the war is over. But, Mr. Thomas, All I, I know is that my plant has been robbed and nothing is being done about it. Yeah, well, something is being done about it. Oh, uh, who are you? Michael Shane, one of my new men. Well, what's being done, Mr. Shane? Oh, we've got a good lead. Meaning what? When a man's really out cold, his eyelids don't flutter. Not even if you touch the eyeball itself. I never liked riddles. Let's be specific. It's quite possible that Vanderhofen stole the diamonds, hid them or got rid of them, slugged himself, and then pretended to be out cold. Nonsense. Vanderhofen came here highly recommended as a reliable diamond cutter. Well, he might be a good diamond cutter, but as an actor, he's an awful ham. You seem mighty sure of yourself. I oh, am. Yeah. Of course, you can't throw a guy in jail because he's got fluttering eyelids. Well, what do you suggest? Well, if it's all right with you, I'd like to find out some more about this Vanderhofen guy. It's all right. Get busy at once and don't spare anything. Yeah. Oh, uh... I want this kept quiet. No outside police, no newspapers. I want no unfavorable publicity. Is that understood? Check. Yes, sir. Good morning. The manager ain't here today. I was taking charge. Well, this is the telephone company, Vanderhoff, and phone out of order. You is on a wild goose chase, mister. The only thing that's wrong with that phone is the service has done cut off. What's the matter? Didn't he pay his bills? Oh, he done paid his bills regular. Mr. Vanderheaven was one fine gentleman. I feels very sad to see him leave. And hey, when's he gone? He's done gone. He bid me farewell and so long early this morning. Here they is now, coming for his trunk. Vanderhoven's trunk? Right there it is, mister. Be careful. It's loaded. Something solid. Thanks very much. You as welcome. Say, uh, you boys going downtown? Yeah. You mind if I grab a lift? Sure, hop on. Thanks very much. Well, thanks for the buggy ride, boys. We're going further downtown as soon as we drop this trunk off. No, this is fine for me. Thanks very much. Gilbert's apartment. Don't leave there under any circumstances. I'll phone you later this afternoon. All right. as much for one as for a hundred. One will be enough. You're the doctor. What do you want on it? Dixie Dry Goods Company, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, well, do you want a name on it? President, general manager or something? That's not a bad idea. Let's see. What's your name? Sherman. Oh, no, that's awful. Hey, what's the idea? No, no, I, it's nothing personal. It's just that Sherman and Atlanta don't go together. Oh. Let me see. Henry Breckenridge. Henry Breckenridge Lee, president. Got that? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, you better put a colonel in the front of it. Yes, sir. And uh, a junior at the end. 
Say, you know I'm a junior myself. My father was one of the Californians. Now, just skip the pedigree, junior, and roll the presses. Yes, sir. Because Colonel Henry Breckenridge Lee is in a hurry, a powerful hurry. If you please. How do you do, Colonel Lee? I'm Miss Hoffman. Oh, might have pleased to meet you, indeed. Might have pleased. Won't you step this way, please? Thank you. Oh, allow me. Why, thank you. My, it's mighty quiet in here. I'd expected to find you all powerful busy. Well, as a matter of fact, buyers don't usually come in here. Most of our business is done by salesmen on the road. Oh, is that so? I do declare. Uh, won't you sit down? I'll have Mr. Hagerman, our sales manager, wait on you. That'll be mighty nice of you. There's a customer out there. Here's his card. I told him you'd see him. Very well. Now keep on packing. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, Colonel Lee, ah. this is Mr. Hagerman. Sir, how do you do, Colonel? Place is mine, sir. I just thought that I'd drop in and take a look at some of your samples. That's very nice of you, Colonel. Please sit down. Thank you. Have you ever done business with our company before? Uh, no, sir. As a matter of fact, my, my firm has never carried line addresses before. Oh, then how did it happen that you chose us? Uh... Well, uh, you see, I'm a very sentimental young cousin. <laughs> My good old mammy's name was Daisy Bell. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hagerman. <clears throat> Pardon me. Long distance telephone. Oh, it's quite all right, sir. Plenty of time, no hurry at all. I told you not to leave Gerber's apartment. All right, Gerber sent me here with a message. It's too important to say it on the telephone. Well, what is it? We must send these dresses on the boat tonight. Why not? The American government found out about our trick. They also know about us? No, only the trick. Who gave you this information? Our representative at the customs office. You wait here a moment. I've got a customer in there. I get rid of him. Oh, I thought you'd forgotten all about me. Yeah. Sorry to keep you so long, Colonel. That's quite all right. You just trot out a few models and we get down to business. Unfortunately, that will have to wait until Monday. We close at noon on Saturdays. Oh, I see. Well, that's too bad. I... You see, I'd figured on leaving town tonight or tomorrow at the very latest. In that case, I will see to it that our representative in Atlanta surely calls on you. Oh, that's mighty fine of you, sir. Mighty fine. Of course... You don't mind if I take a little look through your plan, do you? Oh, uh, I... That again will have to wait until Monday. Everything is locked up. I'm very sorry, Carl. Well, think nothing of it, sir. Think nothing of it. I'll try to drop in on my next visit to town. Please do. You all can count on that. Good day, sir. Good day, Colonel. Rudolph, that man is not a customer. He's an employee from the Thomas Aircraft Company. Are you sure? Positive. Then we haven't seen the last of him. Uh, Miss Hoffman? Yes. Go to the mill and watch him. We've got to learn quickly. Hello, darling. Hello, Molly. Oh, my goodness, what's all the noise? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm calling from the plant. Oh, that's swell. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, now, what did you say, dear? I said, how is it going? Oh, swell. I'm, uh, I'm taking to it like a duck to water. Say, uh, I called you up to tell you I won't be able to have dinner with you tonight. I have to finish up a piece of work I'm doing. Yeah, well, I'm sorry too, sweetheart, but uh, I'm taking this job seriously. There's no use passing up that good overtime money, you know. Oh, Mike, I'm so glad to hear you talk out there. 
Speak louder. I can't hear a thing you're saying. I said you don't know how happy I am to know that you're doing good, honest work and that you're safe. Do you really like it? Oh, I wouldn't do anything else. Oh, I gotta go now, dear. Yeah, I'll see you later on tonight, huh? That's it. Bye-bye, dear. Oh, I, I was just talking to my sweetheart. Oh. Taxi. Keep watching. He's gone. Come on, hurry up. Toby's store. We must get rid of him. Otherwise, we will not be able to move these trunks. You are still going to send these dresses to Honolulu with a representative? The dresses, yes, but not the diamonds. Who is going to take the diamonds? That Gerber will decide. Now, listen to me carefully. Miss Hoffman and I will leave this building. The detective may follow us. If he does, get a truck and move these trunks immediately. Supposing he doesn't follow you? In that case, he will attempt to come in here. Then, of course, <laughs> Felix and Otto will take care of him. We'll take good care of him, huh, Felix? No shooting, you understand? Uh, just hold him here till I come back. Uh, you go back to Gerber's. Uh, use the back door. And take these, hmm? Miss Yeah, how's this? Ha <laughs> ha, I scared you, didn't I? <laughs> oh, I was a rascal when I was a kid. Oh, here's one for you. Oh, yes, very nice. Chin up. How do you like that, madam? It's quite attractive, isn't it? Needs a little permanent, but otherwise, it's very... Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, here's one for me. Uh, taxi. Go ahead. Say, uh, have you got a hacksaw? Excellent. Yeah, or a hammer and a chisel. Hammer and chisel? No. Well, where's there a hardware store? Down on the corner of 15th Street. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the use of the hall. We better lock up early, Bertha. He may come back. Yes.
Don't move. Go ahead. Mr. Hagerman will be here in a few minutes. Oh, I can hardly wait. Well, well, what a pleasant surprise. Glad to see you again, my dear fellow. Just skip the orchids. As you wish. But how did he get in? They dropped me off at the evening paper. Through the roof. He broke the lock in the skylight. With these. I see. Excellent. Exactly who are you? Exactly Oliver Twist. What are you going to do with me? Hand you over to the police eventually. <laughs> Blarney. You don't want the police messing around in here any more than I do. But why not? A cop with hay fever could smell out this blind. <laughs> in many ways, you're a very clever man. In many, only a boy. I am a legitimate merchant. have operated this business for five years. I pay my taxes and obey the laws of the... And steal industrial diamonds and smuggle them back to your boss. Sir. You'll find what you're looking for in his pocket here. It's a card in a celluloid case. Oh, thank you very much. Thomas Aircraft Company. Michael Shane. Riveter. Very interesting. Come on, come on, let's get going. Where? Well, where do you usually purge your customers? Purge? <laughs> you are a very amusing person, Mr. Shane. So naive. Hey, uh, do you mind if I sit down? those diamonds back in one hour. Sorry, Mike, but you've got too much imagination. Besides, you went off the payroll half an hour ago. I, I what? Thomas's orders. Well, for why? Some guy from a dress company phoned Thomas and said that you'd broken into his joint with a hammer and chisel. But don't you see, Joe, that's the gang that Vanderhoff and is tied up with. Well, I'll see Thomas myself. Well, you're not going to do that. If you do, I'll get fired, too. Oh, Joe, just let me have a couple of minutes. I'm sorry. It's tough luck, but that's the way it goes. Now, if you'd have got him with the goods, Thomas had probably given you a medal. Well, tell him to keep it shined up, because the time I get through with Hagerman, Vanderhoffen, and company, I still might get that medal. Or a tombstone. Wait a minute. Hold the presses. I'm closing up. It's 5 o'clock. I got to have another card. Oh, okay. It won't take a second. The type is still set up. No, but this is different. This time, it's San Fernando Realty Company, Los Angeles, California. Say, uh, what did you say your name was? Sherman? No, I mean, what's your whole name? Theodore H. Sherman, Jr. Okay, then make it Theodore H. Sherman, Jr., sales manager. You go in and out of business faster than I can plan. Skip it. it. Roll the presses, okay. will it? Okay. Hey, Mo. Hello, Ethel. Oh, Mr. Sherman. Hello, Sarah. working man. Oh, you look wonderful. Hey, look out, look out. I'm all dirt and grease. Oh, I don't care. It's all yeah. dirt. <laughs> hey, Mo, I want you to meet Mr. Sherman, Miss Garland. How do you do, Miss Garland? How do you do, Mr. Sherman? Well, go on. Go on. Tell her. Go on. Well, I'm sales manager of the San Fernando Realty Company. I bumped into Mike as he was leaving the plant. Yeah, he bumped into me. He told me you were interested in the Dodson Ranch out in the valley. Oh, yes. Mike and I have had our eye on that place for a long time. Well, that's a mighty fine piece of property, Miss Garland. And do you know, by an odd coincidence, just today, the Dodson family turned it over to my firm for a quick sale. Really? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dodson, you know, died yesterday. Yeah, poor guy's oh. ticker. And the family needs money badly. Of course, I know you don't like to take advantage of other people's misfortunes, but, well, that's what makes a good buy a bargain. What are they asking for? Sixty-five hundred. Why, Mike, the last time it was nine thousand. Yeah, I know. Exactly. That's why I'm here. Now, you can buy it tonight for sixty-five hundred with a down payment of just one thousand dollars. 
It's an awfully good bargain, but do we have to decide tonight? Well, you see, honey, this poor family needs burial money. Now, if they should get it from somebody else tomorrow, we'll have to lose out on a swell deal. Yes, tonight's a psychological time to cinch it. Well, what do you think, Mike? Well, honey, I think we ought to buy it. I got a job now. Of course, I've only had it one day, but I know that's it. I'm going to stick to it. All right. What do we have to do? Uh, give me a check for $1,000 made out to William Dodson. Mike and I will take it out to them right away. Yeah. Well, what about payments? Payments? Well, oh, they're just very small payments, little teensy-weensy things. We can handle those easy. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. I'll get my checkbook. What are your accommodations, sir? I haven't got any yet. Where do you get a ticket? This way, sir. Okay. Hey, Arthur. Oh, good. Say, uh, Captain, you got any cabins left on A deck? I think I can find you one. Yeah. How about 25? That's my lucky number. A25 is available. That's well. And your name, sir? William Dodson. William? D O D S O N. That's right. A25. All right, Mr. Dodson, that'll be $190. Oh, I've got a check here for $1,000 made out to my order, Will I? I see. Well, as a rule, we... Uh... Now, look, Skipper, all you have to do with that check is put it through the bank Monday morning. If it bounces, you can radio the ship, and they'll put me in the brig. If it doesn't bounce, radio the ship, and they give me my change. It's perfectly simple, isn't it? Perfectly. Will you endorse it, please? I'll be gladly. Here you are, sir. I'll give you a receipt. Okay, A25. We'll uh, get your ticket for you on the boat. All right, thank you. Come on, bud. Hey, bud, uh, drop the bags off at my cabin, will you? Thank you, sir. Well, as I live and breathe, if it isn't Ellen Shaw. So, face am I glad to see you. Oh, gosh, do you look beautiful, too. Why, well, thanks. Say, it has been an awful long time. Too long. How are you? Oh, I'm fair to Midland. How you been, Helen? Oh, pretty good. And it's not Helen Shaw. It's Connie Ross. Connie Ross? Yeah. What's the matter? Don't you like it? Oh, sure, I like it, but... Well, uh, why the new moniker? After that rotten publicity in the Hamilton divorce? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I admit the boys did give you a pretty bad roll of the dice on that. I'd have gotten worse if it hadn't been for you, Mike. <laughs> but that's ancient history. I'm a business lady now. I run a shop in Honolulu. Well, swell, you can show me the town. You sailing, too? Yeah. Great. Who's being trailed by that old bloodhound Michael Shane now? Ah, it isn't that this time. This is a pleasure trip, and the name is Bill Dodson. Bill Dodson, huh? Pleasure trip. You liar. It is a pleasure trip, and it is Bill Dodson. To everyone else. Okay. Your skeleton is safe in my closet. Thanks. Come on, let's get out of my cabin and I'll buy a drink. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe this will be a pleasure trip after all. Oh, good evening, Miss Ross. Hello, Nappy. I'm delighted to see you again. Bill, this is Nappy, the best you at all the seven seas. This is Mr. Doctor. Merci, madame. Napoleon for Albert Dubois. It's a pleasure to serve you, sir. Nappy, would you get me some... Glasses and soda, madame. <laughs> Please, Please please. Now, that is the kind of a servant that every... Here we are. What? Oh. oh, is this your cabin? More like my home. I made ten crossings in it. Why? Well, what a coincidence. I got the one right next door. No. Miss him, magnifique. Huh? Oh, yes, you're plenty magnifique. <laughs> plenty, plenty magnifique. Hello there. Pardon me, Mr. Often may I introduce myself? I'm Juan Arturo O'Hara, your fellow traveling companion, and one of the nicest chaps you'll ever know. <laughs> Modest, how rare. You seem to know my name, have we met? No, I got your name from the passenger list. You are Connie Ross of Honolulu, aren't you? Yes. Well, I'm a friend of a friend of yours. Herb Dixon of Boston? Oh, you know her? Oh, very well. I've often heard him speak of you. How oh, nice. Uh, this is Mr. Dodson, Mr. O'Hara. Mm. Hello, Dodson. Good evening. O'Hara, oh, that mixes with one or two like gin and beer. <laughs> it's my father's fault. He married a wonderful girl from Chile. Let's all go drink to their wonderful son. You are modest. Let's uh, go to the bar. Right in here. We'll never get a better excuse than that. Thanks. 
pool. Look at this. Relax, boys. What, no swimming pool? We'll put it right here, will you, Nappy? Yeah. And uh, mix this little nectar from the garden. So, oh, uh, what do you have, Mr. Dotson? Oh, just a little scotch straight, you know. Oh, a little. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and uh, you'll have bourbon again, Senor Juan? Yes, Nappy, old boy, but I think I'll have something a little different. Uh, make more bourbon, huh? Eh? Oh. <laughs> I see you and Nappy are friends. Yes, we've been through a lot together. I've been on board since 8 o'clock. Oh, I thought you were an old friend of his. I am. After a steward of Nappy's ability unpacks your luggage, well, he knows more about you than your own mother. Well, what have you learned from Senior Juan's luggage, Nappy? Oh, forgive me, madame, but uh, to tell you that uh, would not quite be <clears throat> on the up and up. Oh, no, come on. Nonsense, Nappy, old boy. Go on, tell them everything. Yeah. Come on. Everything. We've got to get acquainted sometime, Nappy. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> well, right. come on. All right, madame. Uh, I believe Senor Juan is a man of means and is extremely well traveled. Hmm. And that was only after unpacking the first bag. Now tell them what you discovered after you unpacked the second bag and carefully laid out my papers. Oh, oh no, no, no. Senor, please. I... Yeah, let's get the real dirt. <laughs> now, go on, tell them. Well, if, if the senor in insists. <laughs> senor Juan has some letters of introduction from high government officials in Washington to high officials in Hawaii and the Philippine Islands and... Uh, that he's a banker by profession. A banker? Well, we invited the right guy. Yeah. What did I tell you? Nappy would make a great detective. I'd love to know how Nappy will size you up, Bill, after he unpacks your bags. I already ah. have, madame. You already have? Yes, sir, and I hope you'll find everything in order. Well, this guy's a prestidigit, uh, uh, genius, you know? Come on, Nappy, tell us what you find. Please, come on. Get yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Take it, I can. Go ahead. All right, sir. Uh, I'm sorry to say, madame, that the contents uh, of Mr. Datsun's luggage has told me very little about him. Why, Nappy, you're slipping. I have found out one thing. What? Uh, Mr. Datsun's decision to make this trip must have been a last-minute one. Sir, your clothes were packed in a hurry. Sir, you know, that's good. That's pretty good. What? No papers? Oh, yes, uh, uh, there were some papers. Uh -huh. well, well, come, come on, Nappy, tell us, hurry up. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say, uh, 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 there were just, uh, just a few unpaid bills. Oh, <laughs> oh so my bags are <laughs> back all right, Nappy. <laughs> well, we on the way. Oh, to a bon voyage. Oh, and a dull toast. Is this open to improvement? I think I can. Por un viaje lleno de emoción, aventura y el romance. All right, I'll scramble that now. Um, to a voyage full of excitement, adventure, and romance. Mm. Oh, that is better. Is that all? You want to put in your two cents worth, Bill? Yes, I'd like to add a touch of mystery. All right. To excitement, adventure, romance, and mystery. Salud. Drink it down. Mm. That's all right. I'll get it. Excuse oh, me. Sorry. Hello? Uh, come to my cabin right away. It's on B deck, number 101. Why, yes, I'd be glad to come. Thank you, Captain. <coughs> Sorry, boys, but you'll have to excuse me a few minutes. On board ship, an invitation from the captain is a command. Nappy? Yes, ma'am. Would you look after my friends, please? Certainly, ma'am. Hurry back. Okay. You know, she's what I call an attractive woman. Yeah, she's a very regular fellow, too. Well, you've known her long? Well, a couple of years. <laughs> I don't mean to intrude in your personal life, Dodson, but um, you claim the right away with the princess, the Princess Nola? <sighs> As far as I'm concerned, you got a green light. Bueno. Pour us another one, will you, nappy old boy? Yes, sir. We'll take this one to Cupid. Now, pass me up. I'm going to turn in. I'll I'll see you on deck in the morning, O'Hara. Oh, all right. Good night. Good night. That's up. Well, I guess I'm deserted. Yeah. May as well turn in, too. Well, it's not just nappy old boy. Good night, sir. Happy dreams. Good night. Charming, my dear. Thanks. What is it you want, Hagerman? On this trip, my name is Hoffman. Sit down. Have a candy? No, thanks. This man you met on deck, you know him well? Quite well. He didn't know you were sailing, of course. No, I haven't seen him in two years. You're certain? Of course I'm certain. Why the third degree? He's Michael Shane, a detective. A man we caught at a factory today. Mike! Yes. Oh, so that's why he's on board. Well, I'm certainly glad you tipped me off. He doesn't know I'm on the ship, and he mustn't know. All right. Is that all? Yes. Watch him closely. 
And keep me informed. I will. My friend's gone? Oui, madame, as soon as you left. They went to bed. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, thank you, Nappy. Very well. Good night, madame. Good night. <laughs> Tab 25, please. Meet me on the promenade deck right away. Sure, right away. I didn't disturb you, Senor Juan. Not a bit, Nappy, old boy. What's up? You asked me to tell you when Mr. Dutton leaves his cabin. Well, uh, he just left, and uh, Miss Ross left only a minute before him. Oh, dirty work, huh? Behind my back, too. Well, I'll have to do something about that. Thanks, Nappy, old it's boy. It's a pleasure, Senor Juan. Never mind the eyewash. You're talking to Helen. Well, all right. I was hired by a middle-aged Romeo to keep tabs on his pretty young thing who was recuperating on an ocean voyage. You're alive. I'm not the only one. What do you mean? What are you doing on board? I'm going back I to Honolulu. Yeah, I know, but why? I live there. My business is there. What business? The dress business. The Connie Ross shop. Why do you have to commute back and forth so often? I come over on buying trips. Oh, oh, oh. All right, then. Think what you like. But believe me, Mike, when I tell you to keep your nose out of trouble. Hey, Connie. Did the captain ask you to tell me that? You're smart. But a lot of smart guys wind up taking second money. Well, oh, that's because they're betting the long shots. Now, you see, in this race, the jockey's a personal friend of mine. Then take the jockey's tip. Don't stick your nose. Get back. What was that? That, my dear, was an unsuccessful attempt on the life of Michael Shane. I didn't hear a shot. Well, you used a silencer. That's why you didn't hear it. Maybe now you'll take my warning seriously. You know, I could suspect that you got me up here for a target. Even as a gag, I don't like that. All right, skip it. What's going on here? Oh. Oh, playing games. Some people might call it that. No, all joking aside, what happened? We were playing leapfrog and slipped. I think I'll take the rest of my exercise in my cabin. It's healthier there, if you two don't mind. Good night. Good night. Buenas noches, senor. Yeah. You know, I don't think I like Dodson. Seems to be mutual. He told me you two were old friends. Did he? Mm-hmm. What's his business? He's a... Oh, he's mixed up in all sorts of deals. Oh? I hope his presence on board isn't going to interfere with us. I don't understand. How can it? Oh, I... I mean with our plans. Are there plans? I dreamed up a few. For instance? Well, to begin with, the first thing you want to do is to get rid of Dodson. Then the only man on board, as far as you're concerned, will be Juan Arturo O'Hara. <laughs> Even coming from the great O'Hara, that sounds a little like an order. It is.
Where'd all the good cheese crackers go? Down Mr. Dodson's gullet. Oh, fine thing. There you are, Dodson. Thank This being our last night, I'll listen to the toast I've whipped up. Connie, Bill, and Juan met aboard ship. Together they had an exciting trip. Tomorrow in Honolulu they will arrive. Let's hope all three will be alive. What a cheerful outlook. On this boat you can never tell. Yeah, he's right. With some guy running around loose with a silencer, you never can tell. See, Connie, Dodson gets my point. Oh, well, Mr. Dodson, yeah. message for you. Oh, come on in, bud. Hey, uh, thank you. I'm so popular. Hey, listen to this. Sounds like a gag. You and your two friends, that must be you two, are invited to a scavenger hunt. If interested, carry out the enclosed instructions. Signed, the noisemakers of the Princess Nola. P.S. The hunt starts at midnight. Midnight? The noisemakers will have to make noise without me. Now, wait a minute. Wait till you hear it all. Go to the forward hold hatch number four, compartment B. Open a trunk marked Daisy Bell Dress Company. Tear a button off one of the dresses and bring it to the promenade deck. Your accomplishment will be rewarded. Your failure will be penalized. This sounds exciting. Let's see it. People who dream up such daffy ideas ought to be shot. I second the motion. Aren't you folks going? Tonight, little Connie goes to bed early. Little Bill, too. Then I guess little Juan Artura has to go down the hatch alone. Down the hatch. <laughs> 
Seven bells. It's 11.30. That's right. Well, you'll have to excuse me. I'm voting up. Me too. Not me. I'm going on that scavenger hunt. And it looks like a great night for hunting. You aren't crazy enough to break into some stranger's trunk. Oh, it must belong to one of those noisemakers. Well, see you cowards in the morning. Yeah, we'll call on you in the brig. Hasta luego. Au revoir. Dead tonight. Good night. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. Anything I can do for you, madam? No, thank you. No, Go thank right you. back to sleep, Nappy. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, madam. Good night, madam. Good night, madam. Good You asked me to tell you if Mr. Dudson leaves his cabin tonight. Well, uh, he just left. Oh, thank you, Nappy. Wait, come on. Cabin B101, please. Hello? This is Connie. I must see you at once. I'll come right away. something happened. I'll say it has. What's the idea of sending that scavenger invitation to Shane? What are you talking about? Those trunks in the hole. If he finds a diamond in one of those buttons, I'm on my way to the pen. Calm yourself, Constance. There are no diamonds in your trunks. Horse feathers. I've made five trips that way, haven't I? I ought to know. That's perfectly true. But the last moment, Gerbert decided not to use the button trick. Then where are the diamonds? I'll show you. These jars, my dear, nicely coated with molasses and honey. That's a good trick. Leave it to Gerber to think of something clever. Then who sent the invitation? What invitation? I was having cocktails in my cabin with Shane when a boy entered with a note. And as soon as Shane left his cabin, I called you. A detective working out a scheme of how to dispose of himself is very amusing. Yes, we must do that. Do what? Take these to your cabin in this bon voyage basket and carry it ashore with you tomorrow. As usual, Connie has to carry the ball over for a touchdown, huh? Oh, wait a minute. I'm coming too. Where are you going? To a scavenger hunt. Fancy for a smuggler. Smuggler? You got a little twisted, brother. Here, type this. 
And you're an FBI? Yeah. Well, wait a minute, will you? There's an awful mistake going on here. Not until you're in the brig. Wait a second, will you? I gotta tell you something. Listen, listen, I'm in the same racket as you are. I'm not one of a gang. I tell you, I'm a special investigator. Ah, uh, cut the blinding. Well, all right, go ahead, get your gun. I won't do anything. Go on. All right, now can I get up? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, wait a minute. I just want to get my wallet. Oh, I'll get it. Take a look at the cards in there. You'll realize that both of us been a pair of four-star sacks. Sorry, sir. Passengers are not allowed in here. We certainly are a pair of four-star saps. I'm sorry, Gene. Uh, that's all right. I made the same mistake myself. Hey, was this your cute idea? Oh, I'm not that stupid. Oh, for goodness sake, let's get this. notify the bridge that there's trouble in compartment B, hatch number four. Hello? 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 Captain Brown, a woman called from the booth of the lounge and said that there was trouble in compartment B, hatch number four. Before I had a chance to talk to her, she hung up and left the booth. Connect me with number four hatch, please. Captain Brown, they don't answer. Thank you. You'd better take a look at number four hatch, Mr. Richards. Yes, sir. Hey, O'Hara, I keep wondering about certain things. You know, I keep wondering about one thing, water. How come, after being on board for four days, you didn't know that the diamonds weren't in the buttons? I did. I found it out the same night you did. Well, that's why you thought I was one of the mob, huh? Yeah. Well, if you knew the diamonds weren't down here, why did you accept that phony invitation? Well, it's polite for the host to go to his own party, isn't it? You mean to say that you sent the invitation? Yeah, I did it. It was my own little bow and arrow. Oh, oh that's rich. Well, why? I thought I could smoke you and the princess, the guy with the silencer, and the rest of the mob, and make you a rule and move. Oh, the old squeeze play, huh? Yeah, and it works as a rule. Well, this is a heck of a time for that rule not to work. It's Carson. I'm tired. Quickly. What happened? Man came in here and pulled a gun on me. Where did he go? They went in compartment B. They? Who were they? Him and another fellow went in there. And some other guy came along, closed the door on him, and beat it. Just a minute, sir. The gauge in the case of compartment's nearly full of water. Fire control station, please. Hurry. They don't answer? Try again, please. Thanks. Come on. I guess this is the main event. Yeah, and I can't say I like it either. Make a funny looking headline. G-Man and private detective drown aboard ship. Here's the master key, sir. Slug. Shut it off and turn on the flight control pumps. Look after him. Come on, Brooks.
Hey, Sheen, I think the water stopped coming in. Yeah, I suppose the ocean's gone dry. No, I tell you, it stopped. I wish I could go out of my head at the last moment, too. Now, look. Looks like it's going down. Hey, but George, I think you're right. Oh, ho. It's going down all right, Ken. The water gauge stands at empty, sir. Oh, no, it doesn't. Scavengers swimming home from a hunt. Have any of you gentlemen got a blotter handy? I'm sorry, but I'll have to take you both to the captain. Oh, it's okay with us. Come on, please. Come on. Look out! Where'd he get you, kid? Pull the doctor, Brookside, going after him. That's my shoulder, I guess. How's he doing, Doc? Fortunately for him, the bullet missed his lung by a hair. How long will I have to be laid up, Doc? Oh, not very long. A week or ten days. May as well be six months as far as this case is concerned. Hello? Yeah, for you, Captain. Captain Brown speaking. Yes. What? I'll come right up. That was Richards. He's been searching the ship and reports a male passenger has been found dead. Do you mind if I go with you, Captain? Indeed not. This might be the clue you men have been looking for. Yeah, that's right. Oh, my. Uh, Look out for silences. Wait in the Okay. He's been shot in the back, sir. Why, that's Hageman. According to the passenger list, his name was Hartman. Yeah, I know Miss Hageman. You knew him? Sure, he's one of the gang, all right. And of course, you'll want to go through all his personal effects. Nothing here but empty suitcases, sir. The murderer must have thrown his things overboard. Yeah, you're probably right. We'll institute a complete search from stem to stern. And if necessary, we'll drop anchor off Honolulu until this thing is cleared up. Oh, uh, uh, Captain, if I'm not butting in too much, I'd much prefer to see it the other way around. What do you mean? Well, Doc, as usual, but keep this murder quiet for a couple of days. I've got some plans I'd like to work out with O'Hara. Well, it's an unusual procedure. But I'm willing to cooperate with you gentlemen, providing you'll accept full responsibility. Yes, we will. Very good. Oh, thank you. What you talking about? Now, now, now. There's only one mysterious woman aboard that could have tipped off the captain. Don't get a swell head. There was an innocent bystander involved. A swell guy by the name of O'Hara. Mm -hmm. By the way, I haven't seen him this morning. I wonder where he is. Why don't you ask your friend Hageman, alias Hartman? Still sticking your neck out? Mm hmm. Last night's lesson didn't teach you a thing, did no. it? No. I was always at Dunson School. Say, you've been holding out on me. Oh, I always bring these hard candies back to Mary. She's a young daughter of a friend of mine. Oh, well. Far be it for me to stoop to stealing candy from a baby. Hey, look. You got so many, Mary won't just miss one of them, huh? I really wish you wouldn't mind. Oh, but they look so pretty. I can become very annoyed. Oh, you just tell her that Mike the Moocha swipe one from her. Come on, let's go. Same place as always. Right. You're under arrest. Always. You are, Mr. Shane. What for? Grand larceny. Grand larceny? That's what the complaint reads. Well, who swore out the complaint? I did. Remember me? No, honey, what a surprise. Oh, I know it was a gag the yeah, whole time. Yeah, the surprise party comes later. In jail, Mr. Dodson. Are you... You mean to say that this is on the level? Think I'd take the clipper here just to play Parcheesi? Well, 
It looks as though our mutual friend, Mr. Dodson, has double-crossed both of us. I... I can think of nothing I'd like better at this time than to see this international lover locked tightly behind bars. I suppose he whispered sweet nothings to you, too, huh? Sweet nothings is right. What is all this? Take I... the romantic I... Romeo away. Hey, wait a minute, honey. I can explain everything. Tell it to that judge. Come on. Oh, that's nice going, pal. What about my luck? Miss Garland, is this the check you drew to the order of William Dodson and which was cashed by the Pacific Steamship Company? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Mr. Shane, will you write the name William Dodson, please? What's this for, Your Honor? I want to compare your handwriting with the endorsement on the check. Okay, I cashed it. Then you plead guilty? Well, no, I don't. Very well. Case continued to the 22nd. Bail set at $1,000 cash. But I haven't got $1,000. Look, Your Honor... I'm here on secret government business. Uh-huh. Well, please, Your Honor, I, I promise I'll surrender myself tomorrow. In view of the evidence, I'm afraid I'll have to have more than your word for that. All right, then. Call up John A. O'Hara of the FBI. He's in the hospital aboard the Princess Nola. He'll vouch for me. Very well. Thanks, Your Honor. Careful, Judge. He's as slippery as an eel. Oh, shit. We'll keep our eyes on him. Take Mr. Shane to the detention room. Yeah. And, uh, oh, Your Honor, do you mind hurrying it up? Very well. Thanks. You can go back to your hotel if you like. I'll let you know the developments. Thank you, Your Honor. Connect me with the steamship Princess Nola, please. Oh, come to Papa. Below the car, wiggling from the old kill. What? Uh, just a bad hand. Oh. Mm. Mr. Shane, the judge wants to see you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, go ahead, drop, go on. Go on. That's it, that's gin, gin, gin. Even two bits I owe you. Yeah, you owe it to me. Your identity has been vouched for, Mr. Shane. Oh. I'll release you on your own recognizance until tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, not. Oh, how do you know, Monsieur? When I brought your bags down on the pier, you were gone. Senor Juan sent me down here. How is Senor Juan? Fine, fine. He's sitting back with us tomorrow. Oh, that's swell. Look, uh, Nappy, what's the best hotel in town for a guy like me? I, uh, take it you don't want anything fancy. You take it right. Uh-huh. Well, uh, the Continental is a good hotel. Okay, the Continental it is. Say, can I drop you off at Oh, that would be awfully nice with you. You have to go past the ship anyway. That's <laughs> right, Nappy. Well, Nappy, if everything goes all right, I may be sailing back with you tomorrow. I hope so, monsieur. Senor Juan would like that. Oh. Hey, you got a, got a cigarette, Nappy? Oh, I'm so sorry, you monsieur. You to say you haven't? I don't. Uh, well, it's nice to know you're human. Anyhow, that's the first time you failed me. <laughs> I like to have a candy anyway. Help yourself. Thank you, Monsieur, if I may. You know, Nappy, I think I should have been a sailor. Yeah, uh, after a life. The freedom bounding mate. Oh. What's wrong, Monsieur? I almost broke a tooth on one. Oh, that's bad. Hmm. They are a little hard. It must be very old. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. What is it, Monsieur? Can you imagine that? What happened, monsieur? Hey, driver, do you know where the Connie Ross dress shop is? Yeah, it's down near Waikiki Beach. Okay, that's where we're going, and don't spare the horses. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Nappy. I gotta go there right away. That's quite all right, monsieur. That's not so far from the shed. Yeah. Take this man to the Princess Nola. Thank you, sir. Nappy, here's for you. Thanks for everything. Oh, thank you, monsieur. You are very generous, monsieur. He'll take you to the boat. Don't forget, it's paid for. Thank you, monsieur. Pardon me, miss. 
Good afternoon. Is Miss Ross in? Yes, she's in her office. May I ask who's calling? Well, uh, I'm an old friend of hers. I just got off the boat. I'd sort of like to surprise her. <laughs> oh, I understand. It's that door over there. Oh, thanks. And uh, the bags will be all right there. Oh, yes, of course. Thanks. Surprise. What are you doing here? I brought back that jar of candy. Almost broke a tooth on one. Little boys shouldn't steal. Little girls either, especially from Uncle Sam. Listen, Mike, I've warned you many times. Now, wait a minute, Helen. Bumping me off isn't going to do any good. The government's going to get you spies sooner or later. Spies? You're wacky. Since when are diamond thieves spies? They are when they steal industrial diamonds bound for German factories. You're crazy. The stuff my syndicate handles winds up right here in Honolulu on some dame's wrist. Are you trying to tell me you've never seen the stuff you've been ferrying over here? No. It's not in my department. Well, then it's about time you got wise to yourself and took a look at them. Look, well, wait a minute. I'm not going to pull anything here. Here. Is that right? There's nothing blue, white, and perfect about those. I didn't know it, Mike. On the level, I didn't. I've pulled some rotten things in my life. I and... know, Helen. I believe you, too. Come on, where, where are the rest of the diamonds? They're here. <clears throat> Say, who is the ringleader? He's a man called... <coughs> Friedrich Augustus Gerber, it's a pleasure to serve you. Nappy. Well, I'll be a... A monkey's uncle. Yes, Mr. Shane. Sooner or later we had to meet. Naturally, I prefer it this way. So you're the guy that was trying to bump me off, huh? Not exactly. They were my orders, but they were badly executed. Oh. So that's why Hagerman's no longer part of your organization, huh? Well, Nappy, uh, I'm not going to hand it to you. You're a very clever guy. And a very good shot. Goodbye, Mr. Shane. Oh, hell! Don't shoot him in the back! Hello? Yes, this is Miss Garland. Oh, yes, Your Honor. You did? You mean you let that pinhead go free? Without bail? Why, that's unconstitutional. I'll, I'll get a lawyer and I'll sue him. I'll sue you. I'll... <laughs> Who is it? It's me, sweetheart. Come in, dear. Now, wait a minute, sweetheart. Oh, no. Hold the ammunition, will you? See? It's me. And you get your thousand bucks back out of the reward money. With interest. Now, I know I can explain everything if you'd only listen. Then you were in a case after all. Well, of course. Oh, my. Oh. I thought you were just using my money to take a trip with some day. Oh, you silly little girl. Now, after this, when I tell you something, you'll believe me. I'm sorry, Mike. Come on, get your duds on. Well, where are we going? We're going to get a marriage license. Honestly, here? Yeah, well, sure. They marry people in Honolulu. Oh, Mike, you're wonderful. I guess you're right. <gasps> Betty! Oh. Honey, I'll see you later. Manila? Yeah, it looks like a swell case. No, no. No, no, no! 